A little while ago, Ram, a member of the channel, sent me this post. This person, Wei Lu, wrote a blog post about running Llama 70 billion parameter inference on an Intel Core Ultra 5, a pretty decent processor, ultra efficient, and therefore they can shove it into a little mini PC. But what he did was replace the RAM that it comes with. It comes with 32 gigs of RAM, not bad, but it allows you to put 96 in there. So he did that and that's how he was able to run such a large model and these new processors are pretty efficient but the benefit here is that the power consumption is really low 56 watts performance per watt it's pretty good so i reached out to gmk tag they didn't reach out to me i asked them to send me this k9 box so i can try and do the exact same thing i found this fascinating according to this post he's using llama c plus plus with ipex llm and ipex llm comes from intel analytics so this is going to allow you to run inference on intel GPUs, specifically the Arc GPU that's in here. Hey, what do you know? A new driver is available. Did I mention I got the 96 gigabytes right here? After I do this test, I want to see if this is going to help out. And also, I'm going to eventually get this hooked up to a mini PC and run this. <sighs> all in hopes to see what's going to be more economical, what's more efficient, and what has better results. Because 4090 is limited to 24 gigabytes, so that's going to limit to what kind of models you could run. Whereas here we have 96 gigabytes. On a Mac, you can have up to 128 or 192 now, actually. And with M4s, maybe even more. So this set of videos is going to be about the best combination for you, given the examples that I'm going to show. The 4090 is going to be in another video, so make sure you subscribe. Don't miss that. I'm going to start with Llama CPP Quick Start. I do have videos on how to set up Llama on the Mac, but this is a little bit different. Uh, the libraries involved are a little bit different, so you have to set up differently. But we still have to set up the Conda environment, and that's pretty much the same. So definitely do that first. And if you don't know how to do that, I made a video. I'll link to that down below. And then on Windows, you're going to have a mini forge prompt. Run that as administrator, and you can proceed from there. To proceed, I followed the instructions on this quick start on how to get Llama CVP with IPEX LLM on the Intel GPU. It's pretty straightforward you just follow the instructions on this page i can link to this page down below these things change so often so even if i give you the instructions here it's probably going to change by the time you're watching this so it's always best to go to the source and follow there this gives you instructions for linux and for windows conda activate llm cpp pip install upgrade ipex llm for cpp and when you run this command init llama cpp this will prepare that directory and give you all the tools you need to be able to run this one of the tools is called llama cli to run this we need a model though this publicly available model called Mistral and it's hosted on Hugging Face. Now I downloaded a couple of these models. I downloaded the Q5KM model, which is large, very low quality loss recommended. In the examples though, they've been using the Q4KM. So I got that one as well. And I dropped both of them into that same folder, the Llama CPP folder. Now I'm able to run this. So Llama CLI dash M for model Mistral Q4KM. I'll start with that one dash n32 then give it the prompt and the prompt is once upon a time there existed a little girl blah 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 i know i can just copy and paste this entire thing but i want to do it one at a time there's the prompt after the prompt we've got some parameters we're doing c that's 1024 c is the context size then we have dash t that's the number of threads so we're setting that to eight dash e is escape you use an escape sequence in your prompts if you want to ngl this one in my experimentation if you set this to certain certain amount, it's going to crash. And that's the reason I'm using the medium quality model, not the high quality model. It's because in their example, they're giving it NGL 99, which means use all the available GPU layers. And that's the number of layers to store in VRAM. So this is the parameter where the more layers we want to use, the more RAM we need. I was only able to get up to 12 on my current 32 gig machine here. So we're going to try that out. Bam. And there it goes. So it's saying offloaded 12 out of 33 layers to the GPU. And there it is, it's printing it out. Now let's run that again, because that was very fast. And let's see, there's the GPU. <laughs> it's not being used that much. Memory is being used quite a bit. Not as much as I thought though. I did think that we were gonna use a lot more than we are using, especially the GPU here. What if I say 99 as like in their example for the NGL? Okay, it's working. Offloading 33 out of 33 layers to the GPU. Oh, there we go. Now there's a big spike in the GPU. That's what we wanted to see. So I've got 
got 5.19 tokens per second. That's the generation time. If I use the larger model, it's still 7 billion parameters, which is kind of small when it comes to all these LLMs, but I have the different quantization. I have the Q5 KM. All the other parameters will be the same. It's working now. Maybe that GPU update really helped out here. Now at least we'll get a comparison. It's running on the GPU, it's using the memory, and it's using the GPU, but not to the fullest. We're hitting about 80% there. The GPU memory is 18.1 gigabytes. And here we're getting 10.19 tokens per second. Same model, different quantization of the model it gives you very different results. 10.21. Got some numbers. Let's pop this thing open, get some new RAM in there. It's noisy, but it's not hot, which is nice. We'll check up on this in a moment after I pay the bills. I've been coding on my Ehrman Miller Aeron chair for years now, but without lumbar support, my back was throwing errors daily. Enter the Sihu Doro S100 ergonomic chair. It's like upgrading from a legacy code base to a clean, efficient framework. Here's why it's a game changer. The dynamic lumbar support adjusts like AI to your sitting position. Coding, gaming, debugging, your lower back is always covered. And unlike the usual one size fits all approach, the backrest adjusts independently for your shoulders and neck, fitting anyone from five feet to six three. I'm of course on the upper end of that. Need a break from debugging? Recline up to 135 degrees. Perfect for a quick reboot. The 4D armrests move in every direction. Think of them as the perfect support extension for your IDE. Adjust the seat depth, like setting up your workspace preferences. Whether you're compact or tall, it fits you just right. The Sihu Doro S100 is more than just a chair. It's an upgrade to your entire workflow. Check out the link in the description, grab your Sihu Doro S100, your back and your code will thank you. Wow, it's the same kind of memory. This one's 16 gig dims and this is a uh, 48 gig dim. Did I mention this is my first time doing it? Yeah, I know. I've built tons of my own machines, but I've never upgraded a laptop and I've never upgraded mobile type of computer like this one, a mini PC. So far so good. Can't be that easy, can it? Okay, they just popped right in there. Let's close this back up. Very uneventful. I hope these things work. To get 96 gigs of RAM in a machine that's this tiny, that's incredible. <laughs> Done. Let's check out the BIOS. Now, power mode is set to balanced right now. I'm gonna leave it there, even though performance is available. Normally, I'd wanna run this under performance mode, but I wanna keep things consistent. And the NPU device can be enabled or disabled here. It's enabled right now, so that's good. Not that we can really use it, but some programs will be able to use it, just not what we're doing right now. Unfortunately, the LLMs that we're running are not running on the NPU, they're running on the GPU. According to the YouTube videos I watched, there used to be a setting here that allowed you to change how much RAM is allocated for the GPU, but it looks like it's automatic now. Nice. Now, Weilu was running the Meta Llama 3 70B Instruct. I know there's 3.1 that's out now. I made a video about that recently, but I wanna run it exactly the same way that he did to make sure I reproduce the experiment and then we can venture off from there. Here's Meta Llama 3 70B Instruct. I need to find the one that's quantized exactly the same way. Found it. It wasn't under the bloke, but it's a 42 gigabyte file. So it might take a little while. The good news is that 42 is less than 55, as far as I remember, which means that it can fit theoretically inside that 55 gigabytes that's allocated 56 55 that's allocated for the gpu so we should be good just got to do it now all right i've downloaded it <laughs> this huge file and i've put it into this directory we're about to find out what's going on here let's see is this gonna run at all offloading 81 out of 81 layers to the gpu it's doing something let's take a look at the activity monitor here oh look at that memory spinning up oh, wait a minute 95.7 gigabytes used the GPU, there's a big spike here. Share GPU memory, 40 out of 54 gigabytes. This machine is getting noisy, spitting up its fans quite a bit. So it's working, working pretty hard. And look at that memory chart. In use, 94 gigabytes. <laughs> Available, 1.5 gigabytes. Don't try doing anything else on this computer right now. And look at that GPU spike. 48 gigabytes of that is being used by the GPU. I'm not 100% sure what's using the other 40 gigabytes or so, but the utilization on the GPU is 83 to 100%, which is nice. nice. Question is, I'm not seeing any output. So now we did see in the blog post that he's getting 1.4 tokens per second. And yes, this larger model is going to be slower. There's the output. So far, it printed out what I gave it. And there it is. It's printing out tokens. It's telling a story of 
of the little girl who likes to have adventures. It's working, folks. This is actually running the 70 billion parameter Meta Llama 3 model. And I'm getting the same. I'm getting 1.43 tokens per second. This is pretty impressive. It's not fast by any means. <laughs> but what's impressive is that this tiny little box can run a 70 billion parameter LLM. Now, there's other things you can do with this particular library that I didn't get into yet that I'd like to explore potentially. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in this. Uh, one of the things you can do is hook it up to your code editor in VS Code and use that for completions. By the way, do you have an Intel machine with a Core Ultra processor? And have you tried this library? Either one of those questions. Let me know in the comments down below. I'd be curious to see who is using this stuff. But essentially what this library and this combination allows you to do is enables these Intel machines that are essentially mobile processors to be able to use the GPU to run large LLMs like this, which is pretty cool. We've only seen this before from Apple Silicon side from these consumer slash prosumer types of machines. And of course, trying to run this on a GPU like the 4090 is going to be impossible because this model alone is 42 gigabytes and that one only has 24 gigs of uh, VRAM on it. So useful stuff. Let me know what you think and don't miss the next video in this series. Going to be doing some more exploration with this kind of stuff. And if you are running Apple Silicon and if you want to set up the Olama pipeline along with a GUI, check out this video right over here. I got you step by step on how to do that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.